Hello, welcome to the nugget of building typology within the topic of the built environment. Whenever we are studying buildings, the first thing we should worry about is about the actual buildings that need refurbishment. For that, we should consider how the old buildings are made in order to consider possible alternatives for materials which help us in changing the properties, the behavior of the building or the future sustainability of our refurbishment. For example, here we have uh, the typical shapes of how the uh, construction uh, per percentage, the amount of material which is used uh, connected to the embodied energy is affected by the type of material. In other words, when we are using, for example, concrete, the amount of uh, initial embodied energy is much greater than when we use any alternative, either natural material or a metal which is re readily abundant, like steel. In the case of uh, changing these materials for more sustainable alternative, we should always consider how to change this footprint. That will be the first part of material selection. Later, we should consider how we are interlocking our buildings within a greater city structure. For that, especially all the issues related to green infrastructure help us in introducing uh, nature into our cities, connecting the different islands of uh, nature in order to uh, be able to more actively engage on climate change or energy reduction. For that, we need to create corridors which have to build in actual city structure or even our own buildings. Once we decide on how we are going to introduce all these peripheral things into our refurbishment, you should consider how uh, the different buildings which we might have to change are connected or what are their uses. Here, uh, we have a classification of building typology connected basically to the use of the building. Depending on the use, the importance of energy and how we are connecting everything should be uh, considered in order to increase the isolation or to increase the use during day and not by night. And so that's affecting very much the uh, similar constraints which are not typically energetic. Then we should consider the type of building that we are having in the sense of its use and its position with respect to the city. It's not the same to have the uh, uh, museum we can see on top uh, from Bilbao as to a very uh, key building within the Arab Emirates or the parliament in the uh, Reichstag in Berlin or the typical house that was designed by the Bauhaus. All these external conditions, which are the uh, architectural definition and uh, how the building should look like, uh, not only because of its use, but because of its significance, is the uh, latest point we should consider for defining the constraints of the building typology. Later, we should try to analyze what materials were used when first building. We saw at the very beginning how traditional materials could be uh, changed into more natural materials, decreasing the impact of uh, the embodied energy and uh, different sustainability related issues. In this case, you can see through this web all the different types of buildings in Europe that according to all the parameters we have mentioned until now are classified and help us in knowing what are the performance expected from the buildings and how therefore we should be designing the refurbishment when selecting materials. And that's all we should know about building typology as constraints for the selection of materials in your refurbished building. Thank you very much.